This is my Atlantis two second clock based on the mathematics that are encoded into the Great Pyramid of Giza. As you can appreciate since my last video I've come a long ways with the design of this clock. This one does not have the working motor in it where the, you know, the second hands and are turning what have you, big and small hands. Uh, this is a demonstration to explain to you two features of the Great Pyramid of Giza and how it can be determined by means of this clock, the size of the Earth at the equator, and the radius of the Earth from either north or south pole. So over here is the uh, circumference we're going to deal with in a minute, and over here is the radius. I'll take you down to this little box here. This deals with the circumference of the Earth, how to find it by means of the Great Pyramid of Giza at the perimeter multiplied by the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, hopefully you can read this later and that way you can stop your video and, and take these figures and see for yourself how this all works. Up here we have uh, the numbers at the top, uh, the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the perimeter at the base, the feet, and then the circumference of the Earth at the equator. 24,734 miles is what we calculate. So this right here is the uh, um, perimeter at the base. It goes around here. And there's your number, the size, the distance. And this is the sockle. That's another issue altogether. So here's how it works. This represents the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. So we take that height, that number, and multiply it by the perimeter, which is that number here, so we go all the way around the Great Pyramid of Giza, which this in the middle is representing the pyramid, looking down on it, go all the way around, multiply those two numbers, the height by the perimeter, and then there's the number we come up with. So my intention today is just to show a brief demonstration of how these things work. So 24,734 miles we're only off by about 166 miles the calculations that are given to the size of the Earth today at the equator. But we got to remember there's a bulge in the Earth, so there's never going to be an exact number because of this bulge and other issues that affect the size of the Earth. I think that's uh, pretty good for the ancient peoples to be able to figure those out and build a pyramid to give you those numbers. This one is the radius of the Earth. How do you determine? You can read once again this over later. And under the, my video, I have all this information provided as well. And uh, you can put stop action on there if you wish. So now to get the radius off the Earth, we have 12 hours in um, a half a day, which equals 43,200 seconds, multiplied by the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And uh, here's the feet. And then the radius is here. 3,949 miles and that's very close to the accurate calculations that are known today for the radius of the earth from either pole. So this is pretty basic, this concept right here. We take the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is this number here, and we multiply it by the number of seconds in a half a day. Number of seconds in 12 hours is 43,200 seconds. So we bring that hand all the way up and this gives us the radius of 3,949 miles. So for me, I find this very amazing, incredibly amazing, that the ancient peoples knew how to calculate by means of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the size, by that means, the, the size of the Earth at the equator and the radius of the Earth from either pole. So they knew exactly the size of the northern hemisphere. You take two pyramids, combine them together, and you get the size of the Earth. And I think I'll just leave it at that for today. Uh, once again, this just intended to be a briefing give you a basic idea. Later on I'm going to go into more details and this clock does more than what I've mentioned here today. So appreciate your time and we'll do a follow-up on this very soon.